Hello there, everyone. Welcome to Stutter Sport State Historic Park here with our virtual Junior Ranger program. Had some technical difficulties getting this um, logged on this morning, so sorry for the couple minute delay there. But I'll just wait a couple moments while we wait for the remaining folks to get all logged on. Hope you all are having a great day out there today. Let's see here, looking good. So just to go over how this experience is gonna go with us all this morning, I see a couple of you have found that raised hand feature. So as we are exploring a couple areas of the fort today, we will be using that raised hand feature. So in a moment, I'll have us test that out, make sure most of us understand where that is. Um, and we'll just go ahead and start, get started. So again, welcome to Sutter's Fort State Historic Park. My name's Maggie and I am so excited for the opportunity to share the fort with you with this Junior Ranger Cub program this morning. Now, this park is a little bit unique in the sense that here, rather than focusing on the natural resources of the state park, we're focusing on our historic and cultural resources. So we spend our time here telling stories, sharing stories about the past. So that's a little bit about what we'll be doing today. In a little bit here, we are gonna actually walk down the way and we are gonna be entering the Vaquero room. So we're here for the I spy with the Vaquero's eye. And you all are gonna be helping me find a few materials in this room that relate to the role of the vaquero. And then at the end, we'll have a little activity. And that activity is going to entail having a piece of paper and some sort of drawing material with you. And you don't need to rush and get that quite yet. I'll give you a chance to gather those materials when that time comes. And this program will last around 20 to 30 minutes, and then there will be plenty of time to do some other stuff with your day. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and test that raised hand feature. So go ahead and raise your virtual hand, which it should be in the bottom portion of your screen there, if you have ever been to a state park. Raise your hand if you have ever been to a state park. So we're gonna give a moment to have those hands raised. All right. Awesome, great. So that is wonderful. Some of you might've been to this, historic, this state historic park before. Some of you maybe have been to parks along the coast parks um, in Southern California, parks all the way in the northern reaches in the Redwoods. But we are so thankful to have a variety of resources here in California. Now we're going to be talking about the vaqueros. But first, where are we in, in California? We are in Sacramento. And so we're a little bit far from the coast. We're a little bit far from the mountains. We're kind of in the middle of the valley. And in the 1840s, which is the time period we mostly talk about, there were a variety of people here. And one of the jobs that was going on here was that of the vaquero. And vaqueros are like cowboys. So vaca being Spanish for cow, Vaquero, Spanish for cowboy. And there were thousands of cattle in the area and all around California at the time there was um, ranching and farming and things like that going on. And we're going to talk a little bit today about that. But I want you to think about right now, since we here 
talk about stories from the past, from long ago. What are stories that you have heard before? What are stories that you can tell? So we all have stories that we can tell and share from the past. And so think about that a little bit. So we're gonna be walking over to the Vaquero room here. And so I will be changing the camera view so that you'll be able to see what I can see. All right, so raise your hand if you can see building with some doors, some windows. Make sure the camera actually changed like I intended it to. We'll be walking quite slowly over to our Vaquero room over here. So in this Vaquero room, we are gonna be looking for a few items. And again, Vaqueros being like cowboys, they would have a variety of tools with them to be able to take care of their job. So we're gonna be looking for a couple of those items. I'll give you a couple clues. And then I'll ask you if you see something that relates to that clue. All right, so here we are in the Becara room. Let's take a little pan around so you can see just in general what we've got going on here. All right. You can see I've set up our little table for a small little activity at the end of the program here. All right, so I'm gonna give a first clue. That's gonna be that I see, I spy something that's brown, something that could be sat on, maybe put on a horse to be sat on. So go ahead and raise your virtual hands and even your, even your hands over at home, but I can see your virtual hands a little bit easier if you see something of a caro, a cowboy might sit on. Okay, awesome, great. So let's take a little, little walk around and let's see if we're spying what something the Kara would sit on. I see one right here being, I see two actually, but one is more that brown color of the saddle. Go ahead and raise your hand if you've ever seen a saddle before. Awesome. So these saddles would be placed on the horses, so that way it'd be a lot easier for the vaqueros to ride around on their horses because the saddles also allowed them to be able to carry other materials, such as, do you see a rope anywhere near here? Go ahead and raise your hand if you see something that looks like a rope. All right, so let's go take a look here because there's something called a rayada right here. Now a rayada, it's made out of rawhide and this rayada here, it's like a lasso. So you might've seen one before in real life or maybe in books. And this lasso, this rope helps the vaqueros to round up the cattle when necessary. So they'd be riding on their horse and be able to swing that rayada around, that lasso around, and then be able to capture the cow to be able to lead it to where they need to take it. Let's take another step back here. So there are all sorts of materials in this room right here. Now, raise your hand if you're still seeing a variety of ropes. I'm definitely seeing a variety of ropes in here. So let's take a walk over here. 
All right, let's take a look here. So ropes can be made out of all sorts of material. All sorts of material. This is definitely a lot different material than what we saw right there with that riata, right? So this is made out of what looks to be horse hair. But then we've got other materials over here as well. So this is similar to what we looked at with the riata over in, over next to the saddle. But then there's also rope that's made out of more plant-like fiber. So you're gonna have ropes and materials for all sorts of purposes, whether it's to help round up the cattle or tie up your horse to a post or to be able to secure supplies, all sorts of uses. All right, let's see. What else can we take a look at here? We've got something in this room that the vaquero is gonna be putting on their boot. They'd be wearing it, but they'd be wearing it on their boot. And it is black and it is brown. And it's made out of leather and it's also made out of metal. Do you see anything in this room that might be brown, brown leather, and then also metal? I see some right here and over here. I also saw some elsewhere. Raise your hand if you see something that the vaqueros might be putting on their boot. So they'd be wearing it, but it'd be on their boot. Awesome. Okay, so I am going to show you one of those materials. So this one, this material is one that we use oftentimes in our in-person programs. You might be able to hear me handling it right now. This is a spur. So some of you might have been seeing the spur. And you might have seen spurs elsewhere before, right? But so this end would be hanging off from the back side of a vaquero's boot. And you might notice that we've got these spokes here in the spurs. It's kind of getting out of focus for me right now. So hopefully it'll get back in focus where you can see it a little bit better. Um, let's see here. There we go. That's a little bit better than it was, I hope. So we have these spurs here and there we go. So you'll notice, sorry about that folks. I've got my device here that is starting to malfunction a little bit, but let me restabilize our camera view here. And so we have these spurs. And this end, it's actually not as pokey as you might imagine. It's not very sharp, it's a broad side. So we've got pressure points where the vaqueros are gonna be able to better instruct and better tell their horse what direction they wanna go in. And so that's one of the tools that vaqueros would have, and they would wear them. They make this jingle sound as the vaquero is walking around. All right. So let's do just one more item that we're going to look for, okay? And we are going to look for something 
that has a letter in it. So go ahead and raise your hand if you see something that seems to have a letter in it. Go ahead and raise your hands if you see something looks like it has a letter in it. All right, let's see here. Hmm. Well, there's some markings over here on the products over there. That's kind of where they've got the food stuffs for this room. But, oh, there we go. Here we go. So this is John Sutter's cattle brand. So I said we're here at Sutter's Fort State Historic Park. And so Sutter was kind of the man who established the site here long, long ago. And when people have thousands of cattle in a herd, they want their livestock to be easily identified as being theirs. And so this was the cattle brand used. And so you might be able to see a few different letters. So I'm gonna try and stabilize our camera here. But you might be able to see a J and A and an S. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at a one that I can kind of hold and show you. So right here, we have a J and A and then an S. So those are the three letters that go into Sutter's cattle brand. So here in a moment, we're actually gonna be doing our own little activity. So this would be a great time if you haven't already to gather a piece of paper and something to draw with. It can be crayons, it can be colored pencils, it could be markers if you're allowed to use markers. So I'll show you, I've got some paper here on a clipboard and I have a couple different markers here so I can participate and follow along with you all. But first, let's talk about how the Vaqueros would be actually not in this particular room in the fort. So this fort was made long, long ago and this room is actually not the real Vaquero room, but this just helps show you all what the type of materials there would have been. So I'm going to be changing the camera view here for us so that we can work together on this project. So go ahead, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. If you have something to draw on and something to draw with. And then we'll get going on our little activity here. Wonderful, okay. So we just showed John Sutter's cattle brand, right? But this is where you get to see and play with your own letters. And I'm gonna use my letters and you'll get to use yours and make your own marking because a brand is really just something to identify different materials. So you're gonna be able to make your own and you can, maybe you've got lots of pretty drawings that you've made at home and you wanna sign it. This would be a unique way to sign that. And let's go ahead and get started. So I've got two letters that I'm gonna work with. I've got M for Maggie. I've got K for my last name. So we can go ahead and hopefully we'll be able to see kind of well. I know my paper is kind of in the um, sun here, but hopefully the lighting will adjust here in a moment. And let's see here, we have, I've got 
an M and a K in my name. And you saw that in John Sutter's brand, he had three letters in his name that he used. But I'm just gonna use two. You can use two letters in your name, three letters in your name, however many. Maybe you've got four names. You could use as many of those letters as you want. Be creative with this. And notice John Sutter's brand, it had lots of curves with its letters. I don't have as many curves with my letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually make my design with the color blue here. But I wrote out the two letters that I'm gonna work with and you can do that as well. And let's just go ahead and get creative here and work with your letters and see what you can come up with. So we've got, I've got an M, right? But how are we going to put the letters together? So that's gonna be your, your activity, your task to work on is how would you combine your letters to make it unique to yourself? Because we're, we're all unique, we're all individuals and we've got our own little flair, our own little things that make us us. And so let's see, here's that M, okay. I think that might work, right? So let's take a look here. You might not be done and that's okay because everybody's gonna be going at their own pace and you can get creative. And maybe you wanna draw something that you saw and then you could even sign your name with these initials here. But that camera view is showing a mirrored image. So here we go. We've got two letters that I used and we've got the brand, the mark I made. So we've got an M if we look at it this way, the bar in the middle. But if we turn it like this, we might be able to see a K as well. So that's how I was able to come up with combining my two letters. But maybe you've got a C in your name, a B, um, an F, an R, all sorts of different letters that you might be using with your own name. And so I encourage you to get creative with it. I hope there were some things in here that you found very interesting, right? So we talked a little bit about our saddle. And let's take a little closer look at some of the things that we did take a look at today. So a lot of Sutter's Vaqueros here were actually from local native tribes. And so let's keep in mind here how there have been people in these areas long before people like Sutter arrived. So everyone's got stories from their past to talk about. But let's take a look at this saddle again. So we've got our saddle, we've got reins attached to the tack that the horse would have been wearing. So see how those reins are attached like that. And it's made out of the same material as that riata, right? So we've got our rope, our rope, our riata, our saddle. We've got materials like spurs, right? And so these are a bit bigger than those other ones that I showed you, but to give you an idea as to what a different style looks like. And you can see that this has a little bit more detail than the other ones that I showed you. And we've got all sorts of tack material to keep on our horse when we're riding it. 
we've got what's called a powder horn and that has that would carry materials that would carry black powder but we've got all sorts of materials in here and some of them you might have seen before but some things might be new to you today and i hope that in the future maybe you get a chance to come here in person but notice when we look with our eyes very carefully and when we're listening with our ears when we're observing things we can notice all the different details to things so you see there's some different bunks set up just to give an idea as to the variety of materials that you'd have here All right, we're getting close to the end of our time here, but let's just take another grand look, another wide view of the Vaccaro room. And if you're really, really proud of the things that you've drawn while you're here today, or if you wanna draw something from your memory of what you saw, you can absolutely do that. And if your little brand activity that you did, if you're really, really proud of what you made, or if you use it to sign some pretty artwork, and your parents want to share it on different social medias, they can absolutely do that if they want um, by tagging Sutter's Fort State Historic Park and using they can use Junior Ranger program. They can use Virtual Junior Ranger, Junior Ranger Cub, or even Junior Ranger Art. Because as you're exploring, as you're observing all these things today, you can absolutely make some art out of what you're learning, out of what you're seeing. So again, I hope that you had a great day here this morning and I know that there's going to be lots of places that are experiencing a lot of warm temperatures right but and will be one of them so I hope you all stay cool stay safe this morning and stay hydrated out there and I hope that when you're visiting both virtually and live different parks like this, whether it's a historic park like us, or it's more of a natural park like up in the redwoods or all along the coast, that you're observing what you're seeing. Use your eyes to see all the details and everything you see. There's so much to learn. There's so much to explore in this world we have. And to share your stories with your family right? So I hope you had a great day today, this morning. Hopefully you get to log on to other programs with the Virtual Junior Ranger program. Your parents can go online to ports-ca.us to find all the other programs. And there's going to be a survey at the end and please do fill that out. That'll help you get your Junior, junior Ranger Cub badge. Uh, so that'll be really, really exciting. So do you fill out that survey, please, so that you can get your badge. And again, I hope you have a really great rest of your day. Thank you for joining me here at Sutter's Fort State Historic Park. And we'll take just another quick little view outside while we say goodbye to each other for today. And do check out the other programs here as well as all around the state. There's so many resources to see and experience. And I hope you have a great rest of your day, everybody. Let's just take one look at 
the outside grounds here since we are mostly exploring inside the one room. But have a great day, everyone. Thank you for joining me. And we'll catch you next time. Bye.